So I finally got my Playdate in my hands, and let me tell you, it's really, really cool. But the best part is seeing my games come to life on it. If you don't know, you can make games for this thing, and I've made two games so far. The first one is this Minecraft clone called Pulpcraft, and the second one is this roguelike. There's just something special about seeing a game you've made on an actual physical handheld that I can't quite describe. If you want to check those games out or see how I made them, you can check the description. Anyways, I've been working on this game. Originally, it was this Wii Tanks clone, but after messing around with the playdate for a bit, I felt like it was kind of pulling me in another direction. I kind of wanted something more fast-paced or action-like. My idea was to make this game kind of like Doodle Jump, where you play as a character trying to escape this complex. You would use the crank to control the angle of this giant laser that you would use to launch yourself up and avoid obstacles. With the plan in place, let's see how I did. First step was making the laser gun and adding rotation to it. In my last video, I snapped the angle to pre-drawn images of a gun barrel because I was worried about performance issues. But after some feedback I got in that video, I realized if I simplified it by just drawing a line, it would probably be fine. That was working great, so I increased the stroke width and rounded the end, and it was looking like a good placeholder for the laser gun. You can see that on the playdate, it was running really smoothly. Next was to add some gravity. I drew out these industrial walls with a distinct pattern to make it obvious when the player is accelerating. Then, by keeping track of the velocity and applying the gravity constant of 9.8 meters per second to it, I made the player accelerate downwards like it was being affected by gravity. However, notice that we run into our first issue. We run out of wall. Unfortunately, we can't have infinite walls. I could make a really, really long image, but that will have huge performance implications. So here's the plan. The screen shows this section of the wall image. When the player moves up or down, the screen moves with it. But at the exact moment the screen reaches the top or bottom of the image, we'll shift the image in that direction. Since the walls are tiled in a repeating pattern, it'll look like the walls are going on forever. Here's that functionality implemented as the player is falling. Since the playdate is so small, I felt like I might get a carpal tunnel or something if I had to use a crank and press buttons at the same time with the fast-paced nature of the game. My solution was to create a timer to shoot the laser automatically, and all you have to worry about is aiming the laser with the crank. So I added the timer in the top right corner. Next, I made it so the player gets launched in the opposite direction of where the laser gun is pointing whenever the timer reaches zero, and it was already starting to feel like a game. With the timer, I thought that it might be too easy to accidentally launch yourself downwards, so I ended up limiting the angle that you can point the laser at. Here's that functionality on the physical playdate, which is pretty cool to see. However, you might notice that when the player hits the wall, it doesn't do anything. So my next task was to add some collision boxes to the player and the walls to make it so you can bounce off the wall, which you can see here. I just reversed the X velocity when you touch the wall. It was weird not having a laser come out, so you can see that I added that as the next thing I did. It's basically just a rectangle that I use an easing function to change the width of. Here it is on the playdate. You'll notice here that I made it so when you bounce off a wall, I added a little vertical boost as well. It wasn't feeling as responsive as I wanted it to, so I made the timer shorter, but decreased the launch strength. I also moved the player down so you have more time to see the obstacles that I would eventually add. Of course, for any of these types of games, you need to see the height, so I added a little height display. At this point, it was fun and all, but it was getting kind of dull without any obstacles, so I added some spikes into the game that randomly spawn as you're moving up. However, when you hit them, you just kind of glitch out a bit, so I changed it so it resets you back to the beginning. I kept track of the max height you reached as well. The reset and max height display are just temporary things to make the game somewhat playable in this early version. I'm not sponsored, but you can consider this video to be sponsored by my Patreon, where you can support the creation of these videos, get early access to builds of my games, as well as the source code. Of course, I need to add some different types of obstacles, so first I added this moving spike, and next I added these platforms with a gap in them. I tried to make the hitbox a little smaller than these obstacles to allow the player to have close calls and not feel cheated. While I was playtesting, however, I found myself in a lot of positions where I felt kind of unlucky because the obstacle would spawn right in front of me and I was at the mercy of the timer. So, just as a test, I decided to try out removing the timer and controlling the laser manually. The results were way better than I expected. It was really fun to have full control and it allows you to do way more acrobatic and precise maneuvers. It also wasn't as uncomfortable as I expected. So, I decided to make this the default control scheme, and in light of that, I removed the angle limit. So you can do crazy stuff like this if you really wanted to. I'll probably leave the timer in as an accessibility option. The laser was lacking some emphasis, so I added in a laser sound effect, and here's what that looks like on the playdate. I'll be trying to finish up the game and add things like power-ups and more obstacles in next week's video. So if you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe to not miss it. I'll be releasing this for free eventually, but again, Patreon supporters can get access to early builds and source code. Thanks and see you next time.